While the Navy in 2009 was set on building 296 ships during the succeeding three decades, that is for the next 30 years, the 2011 plan cut this figure to 276 ships. And this is before any large political decisions have been taken about how to reduce the U.S.'s tremendous indebtedness. So at this point, I will leave it, leave speculation about the future of the effect on U.S. policy in the region, um, having stated the somewhat dismal <laughs> numerical evaluation. Uh, I'll leave the, the question of what this means to uh, uh, the future and the effect on U.S. policy in the region, and with particular emphasis on Taiwan, to the panelists. The United States has been, since 1900, uh, a nation with both Pacific interests and uh, uh, European and uh, Eurasian, West Eurasian interests, and that's not going to change. And while our finances are a mess, I don't think it's the case that the world will stop and take a 20-year time out while we get our fiscal house in order if we actually do some of the courage to do that. So I would say that the the frame of mind of the U.S. military now is in a really terrible place to try to address the crisis that's upon it, the slow-breaking crisis. And as Seth also pointed out, we don't know when there w the flare-up will occur, uh, uh, be it uh, again in the greater Middle East or in future um, in East Asia. As I'm sure some of the other panelists will point out, uh, China's domestic politics are just as uh, uncertain and as chaotic and as uh, volatile uh, as maybe those uh, of the Arab world. And anybody that sort of counts on China to, to have a uh, straight and uninterrupted <coughs> rise to great power responsibilities, I think is just both bucking the facts and bucking the pattern of, of uh, rising powers throughout history. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll try to lift some of the gloom a, a little bit um, and uh, pass it on, I guess, to John in the absence The of people in China who are the most nationalistic and even virulent uh, about the Taiwan issue are urban social and, and economic elites. And it, it is these urban elites who are visiting Taiwan. Now, to understand why this is the case, you have to understand uh, the modern structure of the Chinese political economy and uh, the, uh, groups, the, the groups of influence and power in the modern Chinese political economy. Now, very briefly, uh, China's state-led model, uh, which has been around since the mid-1990s, uh, is geared towards creating and co-opting economic and social elites. That's, that's why, why it is the way it is. Uh, this has been a deliberate strategy uh, since the uh, Tiananmen protests uh, and uh, from uh, really the early mid-1990s onwards. Because the Chinese Communist Party is a primary dispenser of social, economic and professional opportunities, uh, the strongest supporters are uh, the beneficiaries, which by definition are the elites, the urban elites. Uh, of the 85 million card-carrying CCP members, uh, three quarters are elites. They're not peasants working in the fields. Now, more than anything else, uh, Chinese elites stand behind the CCP's version of modern history. That is a, a uh, version of history which has a sense of strong victimhood uh, and the belief that China's time to address these questions, including the Taiwan question, uh, is fast arriving. Now, as the primary beneficiaries of the system, uh, they, see, they see few of China's weaknesses, such as inequality and corruption, or, that, or I guess they might see it, but they don't actually bear the, uh, the damage of it. Uh, and they mostly see only Chinese strengths. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, they tend to be the most uh, enthusiastic advocates of a muscular cross straits policy. Now, we also have to realise that these elites uh, don't really want democracy right now, uh, since this would fundamentally threaten their uh, privileges and their position. 
Now, you can see evidence of this in surveys done of uh, Chinese students in America and, and also in Australia, in my country. Uh, they enjoy the freedoms while they're there, uh, they have a great time, but they're the consistently uh, the most strident supporters of an aggressive or assertive Chinese foreign policy, particularly when it comes to Taiwan. But even in a constrained budget environment, there are asymmetric weapon options that uh, could uh, deter the PLA for many years to come. Uh, my, my favorite near-term uh, suggestion would be selling ATACMS uh, uh, SRBMs. These, one version can be armed with uh, up to nine fairly uh, substantial submunitions. And this is good because the center of gravity for Taiwan is increasingly shifting to the invasion scenario. The air battle is, is, is not going to be won. The naval battle is not going to be won. This forces Taiwan to choose, and choosing to deter the amphibious invasion becomes then the most optimal way to deter the war. If the PLA can't put boots on the ground, can't put armored units on, on, the, sh on the shore, it's not going to start the war to begin with.